I wish I was special. Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your wallet, because the I'm Loud MTMs are in town, and frankly, they make me cry. And I don't want them to make you cry, because they're $700 a pair. I know. I know, Zeos, what happened to Zeos Platinum? What happened to Zeos Cheap? Yeah, well, here's the thing. This is the big brother, the iLoud Micros. Those are between two and $300, which is affordable. And these are not affordable unless you're like, really need these, Th these. Damn, these. So, I'll make this real easy on your wallets. They have some flaws, we're gonna get to them. They have some external needs. They're special needs. They are an Italian vintage, you know, coupe. And you can't just buy one and expect it to start every time. You gotta baby it a little bit. And if you're not willing to put up with the task of, you know, keeping it going, well, you won't have the expense and the worry, but you'll also never have that feeling. And these give me that feeling. Like these are probably under a thousand dollars, one of the best experiences I've ever had in Nearfield. Period. So, either leave or stay and take a trip into madness. So, I love MTMs. They small. There's my hand. I don't have a giant hand, but it's, it's big enough. And these are not massive speakers. Expensive. The iLoud Micros, which looked cheap, but were super resilient and sounded amazing, were also a complete set of speakers. You bought them like you would any computer speaker. They have inputs, they have Bluetooth, they hooked up together, one amp with a thing. This is sold individually for $350 each. And there are a powered studio monitor. These are a studio monitor. Like that's a studio monitor, and that's a studio monitor, and those are studio monitors, and those are studio monitors. These just happen to be the smallest studio monitor. And I'm in love, and I bought them. Because here's the thing. The iLouds, someone was, they were just bitching after the Vanity T0s. They were just like, hey, hey, you gonna do these iLouds? And I'm like, I'm not gonna do a thing called an iLoud. What does the Apple store reject them and they sell them at Toys R Us? <laughs> but then I got a set when they dropped to $200 a pair. It made my mind explode. If you go through the IK Multimedia, and this is the company, this is their, this is their terrible logo. Because it's IK Multimedia, but they have it like a sideways I and a K, and it's like, mm, mm, mm. Um, And they sell hardware. Here's a premium audio interface with advanced guitar tone shaping. And here are our speakers, and here's an Uno Synth True Analyze Synthesizer, which looks cool as fuck, by the way. Everything they make hardware-wise looks cool. Like it's clean and neat. These keyboards, that iRig pad, whatever this blue board, wireless Bluetooth MIDI controller thing is, all this stuff looks clean and neat and nice. So these speakers are clean and neat and nice. Again, they have their flaws, we'll get to them. But vocals sitting here with Haley Reinhardt I wish I was special You're so very special She's right in front of me. I could feel her face. It's so cute. Just squeeze her cheeks. Um the secret to these. Let's just get the secret out. I don't want to waste your time. Room correction. They have built-in room correction. Each speaker comes with a microphone because it's sold individually. And we're gonna to start to get to the negative points because one of these speakers came with a microphone that was DOA. What am I gonna do with it now? So I just threw the one in a box and here's the other one that I use for both. So possible faulty hardware worries, maybe? I'm sure if I emailed IK Multimedia, maybe they'd get back to me because I tried to get hold of them before RMAF to say, hey, I wanna bring a set of iLoud micros to RMAF to this big event where all these were showing off the best of the best cheap stuff. And they never talked to me. I had to buy a set of the iLoud Micros to bring to RMAF. And when I heard about these, I had to buy these. So I've spent over a thousand, I spent two hundred, I spent twelve hundred dollars on these products. No one's even contacted me from the company. But they're fucking amazing. So they're gonna get the bump. Regardless. I would like to have them speak to me. Hi, IK Multimedia, you, you seem to make cool stuff. These are really the only things I'm gonna be interested in though, so. There you go. The key is room correction. Like the Genelex, like the $6,000 Genelex that elevated music beyond normality and like, oh, speakers are playing it, to, oh my God, I'm there. These have it. 
it's a very, 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 very idiot proof system too. It's literally, I'll, we're gonna do it. In fact, you wanna do it now? Wanna do it now? Let's do it right now. Hold on, we'll do it right now. Um, so what you do is you set up your speakers. Now, these are on some stands that I bought. These are what, Gator Works? Gator Frameworks? And it's just a, it's a, it's a microphone stand. They work on microphone stands. They come with these and they screw into the bottom. I'm standing during a speaker review in my room. This is so weird. So you could adjust the angle to up to 20 degrees. But um, what was I doing? I was standing to show you guys how to calibrate it. Hook up speakers, turn them on, take said microphone. The microphone is pointing up. A lot of these times the microphone's pointing forward and you have to angle it up. Put it exactly where you're sitting, which in this case is dead center of the control stack and a little bit further back from there, right there. That's where my head is usually when listening to this. The end of this, it came with a little XLR to three and a half millimeter. There's a plug on the back, which we're gonna look at the back of this all on its own. Um, there's a button we're gonna press. We're gonna hold it down for two seconds. It's gonna blink. We're gonna run the fuck away. It does four whoop whoops. It blinks blue. When it decides that it's calculated the room and correction properly, it'll blink green. It'll blink green. The end, room correction is done for this side. You would repeat the same process on the other side. That's all it does. That's it, room correction. Take this mic, throw it in a drawer, you don't have to touch it again if you have never moved your speakers. The end. How idiot proof is fucking that? I didn't need software, I didn't need a computer, I didn't need a USB interface, I just plug it in, mic to provide, Hold the button down, run out of the way because you don't want your body affecting like this monitor. This monitor is there and it's been there since I calibrated it. If I move the monitor, I got to recalibrate that speaker because it's calculating sound hitting that. And if there's phase issues, if I put, if I moved furniture around, I'd have to recalculate everything. It's doing the job really fucking well. Um, We have to talk. There's a reason the Mini DSP HD is out here. We'll get to it. We gotta talk about the goods and the bads with this speaker. I have it labeled and also it's marked the desk from being heavy. So, this is the back of the speaker. Power plug, on off button, which is a very, very weird flush square. When you push it out, it pops out. A USB that is strictly for firmware updates. You don't get to play with it. There's a little microphone input, the three and a half millimeter. The input for the actual speaker is just an XLR or a quarter inch. If you want to put RCA, there are adapters. I will link to the adapters that are literally just RCA to quarter inch in the description. These cables, um, if I could pimp anything in this video, it's these fucking XLRs from Amazon Basics. Look, they have a spring strain relief and fabric. They're great. That's what I'm using to feed this. Here's our volume control and here's five buttons. The five buttons are as follows. Low frequency extension on the left. Your choices are 60, 50, and 40 hertz. We're on, currently on 50. That's one of the problems with this unit. We'll get to it. The bass, the bass is great when it works. Then you've got uh, low frequency plus or plus two minus three, high frequency plus two minus two. Then the calibration button, which we just pressed, that has a choice of calibrated or it comes with flat and desk settings if you don't want to calibrate it for some reason. And then sensitivity, which you have to hold the change, which is plus four or minus 10 uh, dBV. That's it. This is a pretty simple speaker. You want uh, more bass? Now it's up two. Now it's flat. Now it's down three. Now it's flat. That's that's it. That it. We at? This is it. We're gonna talk about the problem, the low frequency. Here's your port, right? You see this port? See that port? I see that port. I'm gonna set this to 40 Hertz, which is as low as it'll go. I'm leaving the low frequency on flat. We are still on that song from the Sucker Punch soundtrack, which is a terrible movie, but a great soundtrack. And we're gonna put, 
I'll talk about this volume control thing in a second also because I spent another $170 because these speakers are so good. I needed to spend money on the volume control, but it do pop a bit. Stop it. Actually, I'm gonna set this one. I think that did it. Do I have a shiny thing? I was using my phone before and I brought my phone out of the room. Hold on. Lean perfectly. Okay. There. So now, both are set to 40 hertz low frequency extension with the base levels nominal. And we have to get the angles perfect because remember we calibrated for a certain position you can't move them. What I just did is illegal. Don't do illegal things. The best thing about these speakers, I'm gonna do the best thing about these speakers and the worst thing about these speakers right now. The best thing about these speakers is once calibrated, the imaging and vocal depth and clarity and naturalness is just unsurpassed. Unsurpassed in any speaker. The Swans, the JBL Studio 530s, those atoms I love, not, nothing, nothing touches them once you calibrate them. But, the bass. They're a very small speaker, and just like the iLoud Micros, they, they actually produce a quite a lot of low end. But they may be overstepping their welcome a little bit. Because like the Vanatu T1, T0, T1 Encores and T0s, they have built-in suppressors and limiters. And those keep things from getting distorted. And they're very fine speakers. I think these can achieve higher heights than those at certain aspects. But when the low end comes in and you're starting to feel it, let me see if I can get another song we could actually feel it. You don't mind if I stare at the screen for a second, do you? And look through. I know that's a Dragon Ball Z theme, but I know it has a long, low rolling Beatles no. Going to Suba. All right, screw it, we're going to the best bass playlist. I have one, do you have one? And there it was. All right, do you hear that? That's normal. That's normal. Oh. I almost never run these on 40 hertz because all the bass turns into a square wave. We li And here's the thing, this will indicate clipping and we haven't clipped them. But the speaker just goes, you want louder volume, louder volume, uh-oh. I know if I move the driver more than this, it gonna be bad, so it just crops the low end. And then you get that like, Just bonk, ah, bad, bad. If I take it off, if I reach behind and finger it, touch it once, now we're at, now we're at 50 hertz instead of 40 hertz. Doesn't do that as much. Might still do it at higher volume, but doesn't do it as much. So automatically, like they're just trying so hard to get that low end that it's just, it just, it fails sometimes. And that is startling because you want them to play louder. You just want to keep turning that volume knob up and up and up until you die because they sound so fucking good. And then you're reminded, it's a small speaker, don't do that. I've actually run this speaker at some points at the 60 hertz cutoff with the bass set to negative three. Take the bass out of it. That's why the Mini DS PhD is here. We'll talk about that in a second. So there's, there's the chink in the armor. They can produce low end. You heard it. I could walk into the back of the room here and put something on that's got low end. Here, in fact, that song. Here, let me go back. Okay. Listen to it here. That's a deep rolling low end. It's just room modes are making it work better there than it is here. That's just the case with all speakers and all sound. Everything above 150 hertz in these speakers is flawless. And everything below 150 hertz in these speakers is a crapshoot. If, and here's the thing, it entirely depends on source. 
I've listened to some songs that I think are bassy songs and nothing's wrong. Then I listen to other songs that I think are, ba are bassy songs and it goes fucking berserk. Then I listen to other songs that I think are bassy songs and I hear the port chuffing. Let's actually look at this again. This port here, there, that port, this port will make, you'll hear it breathing with songs. And it's, this is a very bassy song, but it's not really making noise. And I'm pretty loud on the volume box. Let's talk about the volume box because these are powered monitors. There's a volume knob here, not for you. In fact, I'm gonna adjust it right now. Um, I'm gonna shut this speaker off completely. I'm gonna turn this volume knob all the way down. So why is the volume knob all the way down and it's still playing sounds, Zeus? I don't understand. Because it's not a volume knob. All that really is, is a balance adjustment, is what it should have been called. Because the way you have to run these speakers, and I'll put that back to like middle-ish, there's no click, it doesn't go click and is there. There's just a free floating thing between all the way down and all the way up. And you need to respect it because we're about to get into the second reason why this is a hard to live with speaker. Signal and sourcing. So unlike the iLoud micros, which were like, oh, plug in a thing, or Bluetooth, that was super convenient. I hook them up, turn on my phone, boom, they play. These, you need a source. It doesn't have to be a balanced source, but you need a source, and your source has to control the volume, just like any set of powered monitors I recommend. So here on the desk in front, I've got the S-Stack balanced XLR output, powered by USB, being fed by fiber optic, balanced cables jumping over to this box below it. This box below it is labeled a knob sound volume control on Amazon. Here it says yisheng.hi-fi. And I've added some nice uh, markers to indicate the fucking knob because they always have a terrible volume indicating knob, like the actual knob. And what this does, all this does, is take your signal in, either RCA or XLR, and then it feeds it to both of these RCAs and XLRs so you could convert. And then it outputs and it controls the volume. You have to plug it in power, it's done. It's a volume knob. It's just a volume knob, but... 256 individual stepped volume limits. And it makes the speakers go pippity pip pop. But it's controlling like 16 relays that are individually bouncing. Okay, this one, and then these 14, and this one, and then these 13, and this one, and these 12. And that means you'll never have a volume discrepancy like a like a normal analog pot where it can get dirty and you know you'll have like a four decibels off here or three when you, you know when you first turn on the volume, it's sort of like left speaker first, then right speaker, never have that. 0.1 decibels at any volume. Perfect. Now you don't need that. You can get the cheap one, the knob sound with the what's it called? Uh, just a pot in it. It's like 60 bucks. But you need a volume control. You could use your laptop's uh, master volume, but if you're on your desk or desktop with these, you really don't want that. You're supposed to be sitting on a mixing console, which obviously has a volume knob. So that's a thing. So now the other part of this tragedy, can I turn this without fucking it up real bad? Yeah. So that's volume knob, which I had set to the middle. You, Basically, set up your stuff, you set up your volume control, you set it to about half. You play something, if you can set to mono, I can set to mono in FUBAR, you can, in a DSP manager, you could add down mix sources to mono. You make sure your measurements are correct where the room is, you place it, and you should do this before you do the calibration. You place them perfectly equidistant, and then you start playing the mono source. And if it doesn't sound perfectly dead center, if it sounds over there, you gotta reach behind and adjust this volume to balance it. So if it's if it's too far to the left, that speaker's too loud. Lower that speaker or raise this speaker. I've tried running everything with these volumes all the way down, because that feels like I'm guessing. Like I'd rather have it go click or have the volumes all the way down on both and then increase the source. Clips. If you try to run these at lowest volume and you increase the volume here, the speakers will clip red indicators, which I could turn this back on, red indicators at very low volume because you're over signaling the speaker. 
It's very touchy about that. Okay, what about the other way? What if we turn this all the way up and then I feed just less signal into it? Clips. Very, very touchy. And I, I was confused because it shouldn't do that. So what you have to do is end up with your speaker volumes about in the middle and your source voltages about in the middle and then hope that nothing goes wrong. I, I this is this was the combo that I ended up with. I tried this on several other things where I was just running it through like like a Gashelli DAC and then the Gashelli DAC was too much output so I lowered the voltage in the Gashelli DAC and it was too little output and I'm just like what a fucking nightmare.com but I think the ultimate the ultimate solution to that is just you have to have those volumes somewhere close to the middle and then you set them up where you want you balance them to the center you take it out of mono you put it to stereo and then you do your calibration then you never touch them again the bass is literally the only other than this signal bullshit that i'm complaining about the bass not being reliably good it's always there but then you just push it depending on what song is playing if you're playing bird island from kodo which is a very very oh i'm unscrewing the actual that's bad news I'm going to have my whole channel taken down. Hold on, this will be a terrible video. How'd you lose your channel? I was playing with iLoud MTMs. I'm trying to turn this without turning that. Um, we should talk about the different stands it comes with also. I think I skipped that. See this. This is Bird Island. This, this best of Japanese drums. This will always sound perfect. There's nothing that's hitting that like 20 hertz. You know, it's not Dead Mouse. Dead Mouse, you have a problem. Some soundtracks, you have a problem. Anything that's, that's vocally and musical, perfect. Under Siege, don't know. Stranger Things, Yoshi Horikawa. See, Yoshi might go deep though, that's the problem. Yoshi's gonna go, and I'm not even at half here. See, his bass is, is working, it's working. It's not distorting, it's not clipping. We're okay. But that's this song. The next song, it could clip and I have to lower it. You never know when you're gonna have to lower it, when it's gonna hit that square wave. Um, the manual, the quick start guide, I should call it. This is the quick start guide. Is brilliant, because it's, it starts off with all the languages, telling you this is the, if you want the complete manual, it's here. But then there's no words. There's just pictures and arrows explaining how to plug them in and how to set them up. And, and here's how you set the angle. Here's the default speaker stands are these. They have a little set screw and a little angle meter. And you're supposed to get these speakers, because they're MTM and the two drivers are attacking you at the exact same time, you want this to happen. You don't want it to go up here and then they'll be completely off and you'll get weird waves. That has to be pointed. Where's the picture? Where's the diagram? pointed at your ear, pointed at it directly. If you leave on the default stands, they're low, you gotta tilt them up directly at where you're sitting. I did this, I bought these Gator Frameworks because I knew I was gonna use these for more than just this review. And these are adjustable height and different tables and they're big heavy weighted base. So this is perfect right now. Don't touch, no touch. And this, it keeps going on and on. It even tells you how to calibrate with the pushing of the button and then you run away. It doesn't say run away. Be great if there was a video, picture of a guy running away. But you know, this is like a no words, figure out how to use this. Ooh, look, it plays a soundy sound. And then here's the other option. They include these. If you have a mixing console and using mixing consoles in the, like right around here, you can put this down and this fits right in the crevice there and access the speaker stand there. So you could essentially have one of these be like a center channel. Having three of these, uh, look, I'm not, a, I'm not one of those people who, I will tell you outright right now, if you're using these on a desk, if you have a desk set up, a gaming, and your monitor's not there doing that, if your monitor's here, you don't need a center channel because your, your, your left and right will do center imaging. That's how all music works. That's how all games will work. So all movies will work. Yeah, well, 
is an ashtray. We burn it. See, now that song's interesting because it's going left, right, left, right, out of phase. There's never any center vocals. But Haley Reinhardt, she's center vocals. That's centered vocals. These speakers made me fucking cry. Like, that takes a lot. Zeos has heard lots of things, lots of headphones and lots of amps, with lots of mods and lots of music that he loves. But I've sat here and I've just been hit. Not in my face or my ears, but my heart. Because it's just like this weird, like it's like you could reach out and touch the people singing. So it's, it's they are definitely the best thing you could listen to music on a desk. Except they have all those flaws. When I'm done with this review, I'm going to sound demo them here in the desk. I'm just going to put my headphone recording rig up and I'm going to put it up so it's like here and I'm going to change the wallpaper. I'm just going to play whatever the songs I decide to play because that's where it belongs. After that, I'm going to hook this up as the DAC instead of the Grace S DAC. This is my mini DSP HD. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, fiber optic as my input. I'm going to hook the USB up to my laptop. And I'm going to assign left channel, right channel, and subwoofer. Actually, two subwoofers. Because I have Yamo, I have, uh, not Yamo, I have two Canto subwoofers, an eight and a six. And I'm going to use my mini DSP HD to control the volume with an infrared remote. It doesn't have a knob. I think you can get a knob for one of these somewhere. But I'm going to use this as my preamp and my DAC. I'm going to output to subs and I'm going to tell it, don't send low end to these speakers. I'm going to figure out exactly where the failure point is, whether that's 55 hertz or 52 hertz. I'm going to play around with it for two or three days after this review is over. And I'm going to decode these speakers. And then I'm going to be able to send anything that could fuck up this perfect environment that it, they create. I'm going to move it down to a sub. I've got a 10 inch Mackie sub down there. I'm going to have that eight. I'm going to have that six. And I'm going to make these speakers perfect. They've inspired me to make them perfect. Are they speakers for you? You know already. Do you have a volume control? It doesn't have to be this expensive fucking thing, but do you have something that you could preamp? An old Magni will do it. Just anything with a volume knob. There's a shit sis. There's a JDS Labs, uh, I forget what that thing's called, but it's there. Um, just preamp, just, just need a volume knob. You just need a volume knob. You gotta add a volume knob to control these. You gotta have a quality DAC to send to these. These need as much help as you can give them signal-wise. Because you gotta be able to feed them cleanly or they're just gonna freak out and clip. You gotta adjust things. You gotta keep the volumes accurate. I love the little, I like the little pops. It's almost like having vinyl. I'm gonna use the mini DSP, which will make it less tactile. I'll have to pick up a remote and raise and lower the volume, but I'll be able to go click. Subwoofers are now on. And even though the room corrections are taking place, they'll never get the signal to explode. That'll be the greatest thing ever. And then when I'm done with that and that experiment, I'll tell you exactly where I'm putting these speakers. Hold on, baby. I have in here a preview, future flashback. Flash forward. Uh, ignore the KRKs. But I have this thing. Ignore the peppers and onions, too. I have this Audio Valve Solaris DAC. This is $6,000. And it's a tube DAC. And uh, it's a headphone player. But it also powers speakers. And it also has a pre-out. I'm going to hook those motherfuckers up to that thing. Because I want to know what happens when you take perfection, room corrected, and then run a $6,000 German DAC tube preamp into it. Because they deserve it. Alright? That thing is coming, obviously. The KRKs are coming. The Canto YU6s are coming. People are like, you're running out of speaker reviews, Zeos. Like, yeah, I got them. Just wait. The big Swan uh, M3As are coming. Oh, God. And I'm re-reviewing the Fluence SX6s. I think these speakers are tremendous, but you gotta be willing to put the work in. That's it. If you're just like straight up, you're like, hey, Zeus, I need some speakers. I would not recommend these to someone who is a novice. You have to not be a novice. You have to be willing to sit down and work things out. Okay, what's my signal source, right? How am I controlling volume, all right? Is my room good? 
Do I, do I want to get the speaker stands? Do I want to use them on, on their built-in stands? Do I want to put these on top of something? Do I want to use them on the desk on an angle? Because I found that annoying because if I was back here, it didn't work as well as if I was here. But when they're up this high, you can slide back and forth and it still works. These speakers are absolutely worth $700. They just, they're trying too hard with that low end. With that low end at 40, you're gonna find probably one out of every five songs is gonna make him go whoa, whoa. At 50 hertz, one out of every 25 songs at your particularly like volume. They work fine at, at, if you play them quiet, and I mean whisper quiet, you can play every song at 40 hertz. But if you're me and you're gonna push it up, a little, you're just gonna wanna push it up and you're just gonna wanna push it up, then you're gonna make it go from 40 to 50, sometimes 50 to 60, sometimes drop the bass out with the adjustment. Oh, and if you run it on calibrated, a lot of times what that'll do, one real quick thing, I find if I calibrate with the mic, it boosts the low end artificially because it's trying to correct for the room. So if you're in a room where the bass gets lost, it turns off the bass, which means that clipping happens more often. And you can't see, there's no visual that says what it's doing when it's doing the room correction. So if you're room correct, and all of a sudden it sounds glorious, except it's clipping all the time, you may have to physically alter your room so that the, it, the bass does not need to be brought up. I have no idea how to do that yet. I'm just gonna keep trying these in different locations. Best place I've heard these so far, dead center of my living room. Rolled in my coffee tables, put these down, lifted them up a bit, perfect angle, laptop in the middle, glorious. Here in the desk, still coming to tears, but we got bass problems. Corners and everything else is trying to co co yeah, compensate for. <sighs> did I save you all $700 or did I cost you $700? Because these are absolutely worth it. But you got the time. It's like building a ship in a bottle. I'm sure at the end of the day, it's like, oh my God, I'm so proud of that. But most people are not going to want to sit there and start gluing little masks on shit and in through the bottle. That wallpaper, which I was never going to use because it was too risque, needed to come out for these because you had to understand. Links to the speakers, links to the iLoud micros. Um, $2 patrons get every wallpaper I've ever used. $5 patrons get every video a week or more beforehand and get into the yard sale. Normally a speaker like this, something I bought, I would put in the yard sale. I'm not selling this. I'm not selling the iLoud Micros. The iLoud Micros are my vacation speakers. You just throw them into your bag. They take up no room. They're like this big. Throw them into the bag. And you have great sound anywhere you go. These, I'm going to figure out a place to use these in a semi-permanent fashion. How? Where? In this apartment? I don't know. I'll have to buy another apartment and just keep these speakers in it. Uh, $10 tier, by the way. That is the private telegram chat where people will know about all these things way beforehand. Like if I get a speaker, they know about it. They know about my thoughts weeks and weeks ahead of time. So if you want to get ahead of a curve and meet some interesting people who have insane amounts of fucking gear, people who contradict my thoughts. And I'm like, why? Why are you paying me to yell at me? But then you know what? I learn stuff from them too. So that's the $10 tier. $5 tier, see these reviews early. He's getting the yard sales first to the 10th of every month. Sell things. I think that's my rigmarole. I think I'm done. Sound demo these? Sound demo in the description. Sound demo's coming out publicly tomorrow. You could just wait. It'll show up at 5 a.m. And uh, there'll be another wallpaper. I think I know which one. Peace.